Greetings, and welcome back to Board Game Science. I'm your host, Dr. Anson Poitras. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about this little game, Ecosystem, designed by Matt Simpson, uh, with art by Lindsay Falson, and backed by Genius Games. So we've talked about a lot of fairly heavy hitting games. This would be an interesting one to talk about. It's, again, small box game, designed for about two to six players, and play time of 15 to 20 minutes. So it's fairly short and uh, fairly simple to understand and play, and I'm excited to share a little bit with you about it. So first let's talk about how the game is played, and then we'll talk about the science. Ecosystem is considered a card drafting game and is played over a series of turns where you pick and play cards to create a four by five grid of cards that you hope will score you the most points at the end of the game. Everyone starts with a randomly drawn deck of cards, and from that deck, you pick one card to play. Once you've picked that card, you pass the remaining cards to the next player, and then all the players simultaneously reveal their picked card and place it onto the table into your grid. Cards must be placed adjacent to, that is, either left, right, up, or down but not diagonal to existing cards. Once this is done, you pick up the deck of cards that was passed to you. You pick a card and pass what's left of the deck again. And so this cycle continues until the decks are exhausted. And eventually, everyone has played 20 cards to form their grid and the game is scored. The scoring is the really complicated part here. There are 11 different card types, and each card type has unique interactions for scoring. So for example, the eagle here scores points based on the number of trout and rabbit within two spaces. Trout score points for the number of adjacent stream and dragonfly cards. Streams are scored based on how many adjacent stream cards you have compared to other players. So this is confusing. To keep track of all of this, you'll definitely want to keep this really handy scorecard nearby, which tells how all the different cards are scored. Finally, and interestingly, you can actually lose points if you don't have enough diversity of cards. So there are 11 different card types, and if you have fewer than eight of those 11 different card types in play at the end of the game, you actually get penalized points. So that's how the game is played, so let's take a look at some of the science parts. So when it comes to the science of the game, interestingly enough, the game didn't start out having to do anything with ecology or biology or anything at all. Matt Simpson, who designed the game, was a manager at a game store in Colorado, and he initially had thought of the game as involving spaceships and supply lines and some of those interactions. And it was when another customer came into the store, uh, Lindsay, who ended up being the artist, and he saw her drawing some animals that it kind of, the click happened for him and he switched over to thinking about it, about it in terms of animals and their habitats instead of spaceships and their supply lines. So it became this kind of animal system. And I actually really like some of this. I think it's very clever to kind of punish players for not having enough diversity in their card set and it gives you a sense of how we consider ecosystems to be healthy when there's a lot of diversity. The other thing is because of all the interactions between all the cards and it gives you a real sense of the interconnectedness of life and it's not just kind of a, a top-down hierarchical kind of thing but it really is a web of interactions where everything benefits and, and works with one another and because of that it's very complicated and difficult to plan your scoring and you can imagine there's only 11 different card types here right but in a real ecosystem you're talking about hundreds if not thousands of different organisms so you can imagine how difficult it is if it is just to balance your 11 different types here what a real ecosystem is lo looks like and it gives you just kind of a beginning sense of how complicated real living systems are. So I like that aspect of this game. It just gives you an appreciation for some of the complexity that's there in the real world. My one complaint would be that when it comes to representation, the game falls short a little bit. Everything in here basically comes from one of the five animal kingdoms, mostly just animals. We pretty much ignore plants, 
fungi, uh, Monera, and Protus. You could argue that the habitats are supposed to be plants. None of those things are included at all. And they make up a significant portion of life on this planet and uh, how those things are all involved in real ecosystems. So you're basically only really looking at the, the animal kingdom here. And within the animal kingdom, when you look at the animals here, they're all almost all vertebrates. Uh, so you've got seven vertebrates and two insects. And vertebrates, when it comes to the animal kingdom, only make up about 3%. Whereas in the game, they're a significant majority, uh, almost 70% of the representation here is, is vertebrates. Where in reality, they're only about 3%. In fact, insects probably make up the largest portion of our, our animal kingdom, close to, if not more than a million different species of insects. And then when you dissect that even further, right, you've got five mammals and uh, a bird and a fish. Arguably mammals, when it comes to species diversity, have the lowest species diversity on the planet, about 6,500 species of mammals compared to 20 to 30,000 fish and about 10,000 birds or something thing like that. So the actual representation of kind of the percentage of this, if this were being more realistic, most of these cards would probably be bacteria and insects. But I understand that that might not sell as well when you have these the opportunity for these really beautiful cards of mammals and birds and things that we're more accustomed to seeing. I understand the decision for, for that would maybe be a little less interesting and perhaps a bit more accurate to do it differently. But nonetheless, it's a really interesting game and it plays really well and it helps give you at least a good introductory sense of some of what it's like to try and balance an actual ecosystem. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about ecosystem and I look forward to sharing the next game with you.